It's that time again. It's the Berkey and the Badger Board Game Babble Show. It's going to get wild. It's going to get wacky. It might even get a little zany. We're going to talk about board games and the board game industry. And, you know, we might talk about anything else we want to talk about. Um, uh, ladies uh, and gentlemen, uh, would you please rise for your right honorable king, uh, King Bucky. It's the Berkey and the Badger, and we're coming to you. Hello, Babylites, and welcome to the Berkey and Badger Board Game Babble Show, and to my wonderful kingdom of Babylot. I am your right honorable ruler, King Berkey, and I'm here to host this elegant podcast, which is streamed live on YouTube, direct from Babylot. <laughs> Well, everyone is a board game enthusiast here. From your humble king right down to your lonely street busker. I don't know what a busker is, but it is it, it is definitely the lowest of low. And speaking of the lowest of low, my co-host and court jester, welcome, ba 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 badger Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> good evening, uh, your highness. <laughs> You don't know what a busker uh, is? A busker? No, I don't know what oh, a busker is. Okay, it's not an American word then. Okay, a busker is um, someone that uh, d- performs on the street. So uh, uh, someone who sings or, or plays an instrument, they busk. They put their cap in front of them and they play away. And they, they just busk it, out in public. Yeah, that's what it's called. They're it's called busking in pub- England. Public busking. Public busking. Yeah. <laughs> Get involved in a busk up. Yes. Yeah, busking. Well, okay. isn't that very special? Well, tell us, Badger, it's been a, a little bit of a while since we've been together, just a couple weeks here, but we are already on episode 60. Tell us what we're going to be talking about. Oh, yeah, can you hear those joints? We're very rusty at the moment. Yes. Oh, and look and look at the chat. Dan Hughes is in the house. Ooh. He thinks I'm Australian. Australian. Good eye. Australian. Wow, Good eye, mate. Berkey and Badger, Australian edition. All right, put a few shrimps on the bobby. All right. (laughs) (laughs) And Ben Lunches is is in the house as well. Hello, Ben. Good to see you again. Yeah. Yes. I got got to meet Ben at... uh, Jet... At uh, Gen Gen Con, Con, I believe. Me too as well. Ah, it was a a surprise. A A normal looking fan. (laughs) <laughs> a normal looking fan yeah not the, yeah that's exactly right we yeah. won't talk about the other ones um uh, well the only other one was k k k king <laughs> that you think is kabuki kid no the k who i think is kabuki kid which is i she tells me she's not kabuki kid but no she, that's what she says but it's all incognito so yeah. tell us about oh, yeah. episode 60 Yes, in this show we will be talking quickly about what's been happening here in Babalot. Uh, we're going to be doing a roundup on rumours going around in things that make us go, hmm. And then hmm. we're going to be giving um, our first impressions in our good, bad and ugly section of new games that we've played, which is always fun. Um, the good, not so bad. The yeah. not so bad. Okay, sorry, yeah. Yeah, it's okay. I'm just here to correct you, so that's fine. <laughs> and then we're gonna, we've got to have a brand new segment. We're going to have a, a wander around the woods of Evergreen. Uh, in this segment, we're going to take a trip down memory lane and talk about games of yesteryear um, and the ones that still stick out for us and are the evergreens of our gaming experience. And then we're going to round up with our babble topic. Uh, we're going to be babbling about board game groups do you go to one do you, do you run one or do you prefer to stay at home and things like that run, so if, run, be, run, if you run, are in the live chat we'd like to hear what you have to say about board game groups and uh your opinions on them and obviously join in with us later on when we do actually talk about it and we'll read out some of your comments and bits and bobs
And Paul Grogan from Gaming Rules Vids is in the house, but he says he can't stay very long, so he'll he'll only stay for an hour and a half. Oh, it's a castle. It's not a house. You keep saying house. It's a castle. We are in Babylon, oh, remember? Oh, 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 I'm in the time machine. <laughs> stay in the yes. role, love it. Stay in the role. Yes, yes, I must stay in the keep <laughs> where I have all my stone chairs and iron throne. So, what has been going on in Babylon, sire? My well, I got it. Uh, Babylon has been crazy for me. Uh, you know, I kept thinking that when we got done with our Game Toppers fulfillment, which we have now done, which is very, very exciting, that we've delivered all of our toppers to all of our Kickstarter backers, including Canada. Um, I thought that, okay, now it's going to start to slow up a little bit uh, right after, about a month after Gen Con. And then I had to go to Grand Con up in Grand Rapids, Michigan. So that's something I did. But uh, it really hasn't slowed down much. It's been pretty crazy. Grand Con was... An amazing experience up in Grand Rapids, Michigan. Brian Lenz uh, has put on this convention. It's held in the the beautiful Devo Center, which is a large uh, center right on the river. Um, it was it was the easiest venue that I've ever uh, had to come to to bring our show booth in. We had this beautiful big dock area. We were able to drive the truck and trailer right in there. We actually were able to leave it there the whole time. We set up our booth, easy access. Um, and it's it's a little bit different convention because all of the vendors are right in the main gaming hall. So on both sides opposite one another, there's a sea of tables and chairs right in the middle. And then on, on opposing sides are all the vendors. So you're always there. Mm. Yeah, so that was kind of interesting. Um it it uh, it was a long show, but I had the opportunity to go with Kay King and her friend Maria Schmidt, and they both helped me. And without their help, it would have it would have really been a, a nightmare to put that all up all together and then run the booth for that time. But six days away, come back to a pile of stuff, and I'm working on a new Kickstarter now for Game Toppers. All kinds of new sizes, innovations, different mats, different accessories. Like when, when you see what's going to happen with Game Toppers um, and then going to the international market, it's going to be crazy, but uh, it's exciting, but a ton of work. So that's what I've been up to. Wow, that's that's a lot of work. That sounds a lot more interesting than what's been going on here, apart from, you know, Gen Con and the brussels board gaming uh, festival but me i've been i've been helping change our our downstairs toilet oh wonderful yes so befitting befitting of your position it is really it really is cleaning out the muck and breaking walls and putting new walls up just breaking down the walls as you can tell diy is not my thing and ah. I am hating every minute of it. Hire a professional plumber. Yes, that's what I want to do, but it's always but, the, the boss. But, the boss. Uh, my, 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 my princess always tells me, no, no, do it yourself. It's cheaper. <laughs> so, well, make sure when you hire a plumber that they wear a long shirt. I'm just saying. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, a long tail on their shirt. It just. I'm just saying. Okay, <laughs> so apart from that, yes, um, I've managed to finish off the Chronicles of Crying soundtrack, well, soundtrack, well, music, ambient music, which is to go along with the, the game Chronicles of Crime, which is half app, half board game, where you're detectives trying to figure out a crime and you're interrogating people. Um, so that is now in the bag. Um, I'm, I'm very happy with it. Um, I wish I could have done more. I would have loved to have done more sound and more music and and make it you know a bigger experience because i know what it's like when you play a game and you've got background music on and the same track comes on right in the same game that you're still playing and it's like well i've heard this already and it makes you inclined to switch it off but um hopefully they will they will do stuff with the app to 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 mitigate that and make it sound good or maybe contact me and say we need some more soundtracks. Ah, there you go. Make us some more music. Well, that's exciting. You always do such a great job with all your soundtracks. Oh, I hope. <laughs> I don't know. I just do what I like. And people say, yeah, that's good. We'll take that. Yeah, fine. Well, I, you know, we're talking about what's going on, but we want to talk about what's coming up as well. 
because Ooh. we both know that something very exciting is coming up, and it's in your neck of the woods. Yes, and that's why we're doing the toilet, so you've got somewhere to sleep when you come oh, over good. and stay with me. Yes, we're talking about Essen. Essen, <laughs> we're going to Essen. Berkey's going to Essen, and we just find out I'm staying at the same hotel that you are. You are actually in the same hotel as me. Uh, wow. The Atlantic Congress Hotel in Essen. Cool. We will be hanging out every night. <laughs> it's going to be awesome, and we're going to eat sausage and kielbasa and bratwurst and spitzel, and we are going to eat all kinds of German foods. I'm going to have sandwiches. No, no <laughs> sandwiches. And we're going to have German beers. Yeah, we'll have German beers and in the evening. And pretzels. Big pretzels. Meet each other in the morning at breakfast in the, in the hotel. I'll be good. <gasps> oh, yes. It's going to be awesome. Yeah, we're super excited. I'm still working on all my plans and trying to get that all done. But I guess we could talk about all the things going on in our lives. I, I don't even know if anybody cares about all that stuff. But <laughs> but we do want to cut. Probably we've got a new segment I'm really excited about us that we're going to be talking about called the Woods of Evergreen, where we're going to be talking about these wonderful evergreen games that are still evergreen to us. But before we do that, we're going to do our our segment that is the news, things that make you go oom. But before we do that, we want to welcome our wonderful sponsor, Academy Games. Academy Games, uh, Uva Eichert and Gunta were at... Uh, Uva was at the Grand Con Gaming Convention, and he had one of his game toppers there. And what did he do? He set up the game Mera Nostrum. Um, Mera Nostrum has this, they have this amazing mat, play mat for it. If you get Mera Nostrum, I highly recommend buy the mat. This thing is beautiful. This beautiful blue color and rich tones where everything is laid out in this large footprint. He has a Holmes topper and it easily fits on there. Then he had Mare Nostrum set up in all of its glory. And they have a, a coin kit for all of the resources resources that are these beautiful clay coins. Uh, Mare Nostrum is one of my favorite games. And, you know... Academy Games have done so many awesome games, you know, Vikings 878, you see up there, um, the the whole uh, series of 1775 and 1754, as long as Freedom and the Underground Railroad, I mean, they just keep making amazing games, but Mara Nostrum, absolutely one of my favorites, check it out at academygames.com. Let's talk about the poll after our last show, which seemed like a decade ago. <laughs> Perfect. Tell us about the poll. Oh, we posted a poll after our last show because, you know, th- this has been the year for us, 2018. I've met you at Gen Con, and you're going to be meeting me at Essen, like, for the first time ever. Um, so our poll was, um, what is the greatest experience that you had at Gen Con this year? Oh, yes, yes, yes. Okay, and I'm probably... Hey, I'm screen sharing. Dearie me. You don't want to look at the Academy Games logo, do you? No. No, but I want, I want to see that screen share. It just went away. <laughs> oh, did, did it? I might... Oh, yeah, I still got clothes on. Yeah, I thought I was naked for a second. But anyway, on our poll, we had... You know, I, I put... a. a a big list of rubbish as well as some important things and one of the things that i put were well the most popular vote uh, by far was that for gen con for some people was they got the chance to play with their best friend which i think i should have play in with my best friend i should have i should have clicked that one really because i did play with my best friend we played jamaica together and that was a laugh and a half that was a hoot oh yes. a hoot and we played your badass game, right? And we did play my badass game. Well, it's not my yeah. badass game, but... It's That's a, what it's actually called, too. I'm not being vulgar. No, it's Badass Force. It's actually called. Oh, well, I should say it right. But um, I'll talk more about that next month, probably, when it's um, on Kickstarter and, and, and do some stuff with that. Cool. Um, yeah, but the second most uh, voted thing was it, it 
gave people a chance to talk to their favorite board game star, whether it be a board game designer, publisher, or, or celebrity, um, which I thought was nice as well. Yeah, they got to talk to Berkey and they got to talk to Badger, the most famous people in the world. <laughs> well, well, I don't think. I, I, if. Well, Kay would have voted then, <laughs> wouldn't she? Because she got to talk to me. Yes. Yeah, I think that was the only person I really spoke to, apart from Ben as well. So, And Paul. But I think I annoyed Paul. Sorry, Paul. I cannot count how many people came up to me and said, Berkey, I just love the Berkey and Badger board game babble show. I can't tell you how many. I can't count them. <laughs> Can I? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I can count them. One, two, three. Ah, 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 yeah. ah. Three people came up to me. Maybe minus two. <laughs> so the next, the next popular ones were um, I managed not to offend anyone with my natural spell. Um, Your natural smell. I didn't notice any uh, unusual musk no. coming from you. No. No, no. I, I, again, in general, you know, but, but people. most people always talk about these events and say that people stink. And I hardly smell anybody. There was a few odors, but not too many. I, that- I expected badger to have badger musk and smell <sighs> like a badger, but it, it was better than I thought. I was expecting you to smell like beef jerky, but you didn't obviously make any. Well, and and I didn't make my extract that I normally bring. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dearie me. Yeah. Well, these polls are an awful lot of fun. You can go to our Board Game Geek Guild number 2248 and join us on all of the polls. We're going to come up with a poll for this uh, episode as well called Come Together mm-hmm. and talking about gaming groups. And uh, Sir Badger, the, the brave there, will absolutely... Come up with a fantastic one. And with that, I think we're ready to move on to our next segment. Things that make us go, hmm. Board Game News. Berkey and Badger reflect on the current events that are happening in the board game industry. Some may be good, some may be bad. But they're all things that make us go, hmm. There's a lot going on in the chat and I haven't had a chance to read it. Oh, it's just Dan mostly just talking about his cheap flights and double-decker trains in Germany and talking about he doesn't ever smell anybody bad because his his olfactory nodes have actually been burnt out from years of, of abuse. Yeah. Things of that nature. Yes. He's he's So that Wednesday day he's been eating. That's well, he takes is. cayenne pepper and he, he snorts cayenne pepper. I didn't know that was a thing, but that's Dan. You know, what do you do? Yeah, Bless I do. him, I guess. I, I feel bad for the man. Yeah, I heard about his dog, Gromit. has <laughs> got no nose. <laughs> I'm just kidding with you, brother. All right. Things that make you go, hmm. Barry, have you got something interesting that's making you go, hmm? Yes, yes. Um, I don't know if this is me or not, but October is going to... I think October is going to be the year of... Well, the time of year that a lot of Kickstarters are going to explode all over the the Kickstarter site, you know that one? Yeah, because I, I've been I've been approached many times, and a lot of people that want to have videos made for their Kickstarter, they want them in October. And again, I've spoken to a lot of uh, people like uh, Dan King and. Uh, Forrest Bauer and Lance Meister, and they agree with me that, you know, that October, that they can't do anything because it's all Kickstarter videos that they have to make for for companies because they got Kickstarters coming. Um, and so I think October is going to be chock-a-block. I wish I could, like, list off lots of them, but I can't. I was going to talk about claustrophobia, though, because claustrophobia was going to start in October, but they're actually pushing that back to November. Uh, claustrophobia for you guys is a game which is by monolith and it's a minis game which is a reprint of the original uh claustrophobia it's not a reprint it's a re-edition um with more stuff involved and they're trying to change kickstarter in in the light of making it more of a storefront um which is good in a way because basically if you back it you get the game pretty quickly because they're going to be making the game pretty quickly. So therefore, 
They don't need to hire a warehouse to store all the games that have not been sold. Also, with the Kickstarter, you're going to get it a lot cheaper than what you would if you bought it from retail because they're cutting out all the middlemen, so the, the, the distributor and then the store. So it's going straight to you. And um, I think it's good. And I think it's going to be a nice experiment because this is normally Kickstarter is all about stretch goals and then promises about this and that being added to it. And this kickstarter has none of that it's just a flat basic this is the game you're getting all of this and that's it you pledge you get it soon um and because they they are having manufacturing problems at the moment because they can't manufacture all the games at once that's why it's being pushed back from october to november so yes october looks like it's going to be jam-packed from all the the kickstarters which are going to be starting yeah, I think it's interesting. You know, obviously Kickstarter has been very prolific in the industry. The last report I saw that the last 12 months, $145 million was dedicated to the board gaming segment in Kickstarter, which that's a significant number. Uh, it's a significant marketing arm using Kickstarter. And then there are differences in distribution, of course. And it's interesting to me to see some of the companies like Monolith, for instance, that are using Kickstarter most exclusively rather than going through distribution. Um, I don't know how I feel about that personally, actually. I I feel like it's fine to go to Kickstarter to need to capitalize. That makes good sense to me. But excluding the larger audience and supporting the retail channel – I don't like that side of it. Mm. I I would like to see us support the retail channel because I believe another segment in the hobby that is growing, at least for those that are doing it well, is the board game stores that are putting up stores that offer a lot of community. And I would like to see them supported. So personally, there's a little bit of give and take on how I feel about Kickstarter. But yeah, it's an interesting topic. And there you go. So what's been making you go, hmm? Well, one of the things that's been making me go, hmm, is uh, there is a lot of drama going on uh, since this summer. There was some drama at Gen Con, um, but the drama I'm referring to is recent drama with the Gamma Trade Association. Um, The Gamma Trade Association is basically a retailer and a board game publisher uh, organization that helps support its members uh, to produce and help the gaming hobby, the game publishers, the retailers, all of that kind of stuff. They have the GTS, the Gamma Trade Show, which is held in March in Reno, Nevada last year and this year used to be in Las Vegas. And they also are the the they hold the Origins Game Fair in Columbus, Ohio. Um. About 10 years ago, if I remember the report correctly, John Ward came into Gamma and basically took over as the executive director, really righted the ship, so to speak, because it was in financial disarray. And as he came on board, there's other directors there as well. uh, All of a sudden, the Gamma uh, presence started to increase and improve. Uh it is now in a situation where it's it's in a good scenario. But recently, uh, the board, uh, without its emeritus members, have voted to uh, not renew John Ward's contract. So there's a lot of hubbub about it. There's one of the board members that wrote this incredibly long uh, opinion about why he feels they need a change. Uh, John Ward responded to it. It fe- it seems like it's not a unanimous decision. It seems like Origins has done really quite well and GTS is improving. Uh, so it just made me go, hmm. I actually did read all of the articles. I saw what was going on there. And in my humble opinion and just looking from the outside in i've only been to the gamma trade show twice i've been to origins for the last five years and now as a as a vendor at these these uh uh events it really makes me wonder what's going to happen is i'm finding an executive director that takes on the tasks that are involved in growing an organization just to get them up to speed where where the organization is at right now 
uh, that that's an impressive task. And then to find somebody that has the skill set and you know, I like the old adage, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. I like the adage, you know, you dance with those who brung you. So, I, you yeah. know, it's like, I don't think it's probably the place right now or the time to throw away John in my mind. I don't know him very well. I've met him. I don't know all the inner workings. So I'm talking a little bit out of a vacuum here, but it seems to me like, you know, sometimes things happen personality wise and on these boards you've got all kinds of management by committee and I hate that stuff. Mm. I love having consensus, but management by committee and having political things moving the agenda drives me nuts. Um so anyway, it just makes me go, hmm. I'd be really interested what other people feel about this particular situation. Uh ID uh, ICV2 is reporting on it regularly, so this is all very public knowledge. This isn't gossip or anything like that. This is very public information right now. And they're holding a great big board meeting, I guess, in like a week, where all of this is going to get really hashed out. Um, it doesn't sound good. Um, and I've been really happy with what's been going on with Gamma in the last couple of years. So mm. interesting to see what happens. Yeah. Yeah, some, but the thing is, sometimes, in my experience, if you chop the head off, the body will function for a while. So it's just waiting for the new head to come in to to see how things move. And, you know, because it's like anything, you know, you, you run you run a shop and the manager, you, you go sick for a week or so. The, the staff know how to continue the job even though you're not there to, to tell them what to do. They might slack off a bit here and the longer you're off, the more it changes. So uh, we shall see. Yeah, that's that's possible. You know, this is a reasonably large organization. And yet, on the other hand, this isn't a staff heavy organization. Precisely. And uh, uh, John has put a lot into it over the years. He has a military background and and seems to be a pretty good organizer but yeah it's 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 interesting i hope things go well for for john i hope things go well for the organization yes so do we well that's our segment things that make you go hmm Mm. and so we're gonna move right on to the games that we've recently played yeah that's the head being chopped off right you do that do that with chickens and then you really know what's going on oh i don't want to no it's not my thing i'm squeamish yeah yeah, yeah, you'd be squeamish if one came running after you. <sighs> <laughs> so we're going to the section, the good, the not so bad, and the ugly. through our good and good the not so bad and ugly what we're trying to accomplish and run us through those memes will you barry okay yeah oh phew. for the good we have the breakfast club who are sat around doing whatever the breakfast club does they're in detention they're in detention oh they're not having breakfast then no oh. i don't know why they called it the breakfast club okay so what we have is some guy <laughs> sorry i don't know the breakfast club yeah, that's the thuggy guy. I know the Wacked Day Club. Yeah, that's Judd, whatever his last name is. Okay. That's his actor name. He says, I'm going to be the DM. Mm-hmm. And then you have oh, Emilio Estevez there. Yep, and he's the jock stud kid saying, really? Yeah, and then you got Ali Sheely. You know, she's the crazy one. She's going, <laughs> this will be exciting. Oh, and there's Molly Ringwald. You know, she's uh, Little Miss Pris. You know, she says, if he thinks I'm playing with him, he's crazy. Uh-huh. You know. Yeah. Talk to the hand. And then, like, like, yeah, Judd Nelson. That's right, Rick. Thanks. <laughs> Rick Ortloff is in the house. Woo! And uh, Castle. And, and Dan Hughes said bonk and boob, and I just don't even know what that means. <laughs> it's funny. You know, whenever you say that, it's funny. But, okay, so this other guy, I forget his name, but he's kind of the... the the nerd and he says i wonder what D is 
<laughs> okay, so that's the good. Then we go to the not so bad. Uh oh, what do we have there? That's the Goonies. <laughs> the Goonies. Chunky saying, Chunk, baby. We can't believe it. It's not butter. <laughs> And you have Sean Sean Astin's character saying, "It's true." And then you have oh, it's Sam. It's it's baby Sam. It's baby Sam. Yeah, before he got his big feet. I didn't. I didn't even know that. That's baby Sam. And then you have mouth. It's mouth. I think mm. it was mouth. Mouth. Yeah. I found it at a thrift store. And then you have Data saying, "Ah, fortune and glory." Fortune and glory. Go, goey. Da- Sorry. Dr. Jones. Do- Dr. Jones. Dr. Jones. Dr. Jones. Is that the same actor? It's the same actor. Ah, oh, cool. Who's a now a stuntman. So that's not so bad. And then we have the ugly. Uh-oh. These guys aren't ugly, are they? No, yeah. I think they're from Dan's uh, corner of the world. Yeah, they're ugly. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> that's why Dan grew a beard, to, to distract uh, yeah. himself from, from these four, which is supposed to be fabulous. The fabulous, fabulous four Beatles. Yep. Yes. And so, what is all uh, Dan McCartney saying? Dan McCartney. Dan McCartney is. I'm going to try and do the accent. Bob McCartney. Bob McCartney. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Paul. Uh, Paul. Paul. Paul McCartney. He's, he's saying the same thing. These the same words. Yeah. He says, "I can't believe it." Now, that's nothing like Paul. Hmm. I can't believe. No, I can't believe it's no butter. It's in the sand. Sorry, I'm going to weird <laughs> English accent mode. Yeah, say, say them in the English accents. That'll be better. Uh, the Liverpoolian. So I've got to get that Liverpoolian kind of accent going. I'm going to offend yeah, li- some... Li- Liverpoolian. I'm going to go, offend go. people. I'm going to have to edit all this out. Hey, greetings. Hey, mate. Ah, uh, no. No. Uh, I can't do it. <laughs> so what? what's the next guy say? Okay. Uh, I knew we could win this tourney. Tawny, I like that, because they would have said tawny, not tournament. They're very good. And then you have uh, John. Uh, next year, next year, it will be even better. Yeah. Who's John, anyway? John. It's John the Toilet Man. John. Oh, he's the plumber. He's the plumber. You turn him upside down, and all his hair just goes, vroom. Oh, it's like a scrub brush. Yeah. And then, you, oh, I can do Ringo. Ringo. That's what happens. The, the three guys just spin him. Thomas okay. was walking down the station. Oh, blimey. No, that's a terrible Ringo. Why can't I do voices? I can't do Ringo anymore. Ringo. That's Thomas. Horrible. Thomas the Tank Engine. Nope. <laughs> Ringo Star. Ringo Star is a bit like that. Yeah, yeah. We'll be in flux next year around. Yeah, yeah. We flux. Flux. I can't speak. It, Maybe it's it, this it says, will flux be around next year? So the, obviously they want a flux tournament. Oh, right. Okay. <clears throat> you don't really get anything, do you? No. No, it's... Mm. I, I think it's the T. Off with his head! <laughs> no! Who, who will run okay, the show Okay, so that's our good, the not-so-bad and the ugly, and that's all we're going to do. We're not going to actually talk about any games. No, that's it, because that's taking too long now. <laughs> yeah, it really did. <laughs> all right, so I have a game Go that on. I just played. It's a small game, okay? Small box. Um, from a very popular company, okay? Mm-hmm. So we got to try um, and guess this, guys. Come on. So you guys got to guess this, but this has four little stacks of different kind of characters, and it has different types of armor that gives you extra hit points. It also has little... It could have like a torch. It could have a chalice, got things of this nature. You've got it? Well, let me finish. Yeah, you finish. Um because uh, you guys got to guess this. We'll see if the if the chat and all of our millions of online listeners can 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 guess this. Um, so you've got all these different cards, and then you are going down to fight monsters. And there's a whole bunch of different monsters that are going to come out. But this is kind of a push your luck bidding thing. You're going to bid basically whether you're going to keep keep uh, put that guy in, in the dungeon or if you're going to going to keep it and take one of the special cards away that helps you fight the monsters in the dungeon. And this keeps going until everybody passes. So tell me what you guys think this might be. I see the chat now, and it looks like Dan Hughes... Has got it right. He's got it right. (laughs) Yes. Welcome to the dungeon from Yellow. Welcome to the dungeon. 
Okay, this was a this was a, a game here. You can see these little cards. Files. Here's the Barbarian, for instance. They're printed on both sides. And then he's got this special armor that gives him four hit points. He can have a torch. He can have this uh, healing potion. He can have this here is a, a war hammer. And then this here is a leather shield that gives him extra hit points. And so when you're going into this game, it's this game can be really nasty. Mm-hmm. Uh, it can be really take that when you get people who are, uh, you know, they're putting bad monsters in there and they have no intention of going through the dungeon. Yeah. You have to successfully go through the dungeon two times to actually win the game. Win the game. So tell me what you think I think about Welcome to the Dungeon. I think you think it's not so bad. It's, it For me personally, it's not a fantastic game. It's a nice kind of bluffing, push-your-luck game because you're looking at one monster from the deck and you're thinking, okay, shall I put this in the dungeon so I can fight it or someone else can fight it? Or do I throw it away as well as... Um, you know, a power up for the hero, which is going to go into the dungeon with you. Um, it is, it's fun. It's, it's five minutes of fun, ten minutes of fun. But I don't think it's a great game, and I don't think you'll think it's a great game. I think you'll think it's okay. It's a not so bad. Yeah, that's uh, again our good, the not so bad, and ugly segment is an impression segment. Yeah. So this isn't a, a full fledged review where we've played it at all player counts and all that kind of thing. Um, we did play it uh, through with three players, and I think that's exactly how I feel. Not so, not so bad. Mm. Yeah, it's not so bad. Um, it's not great. It's not like I thought it was earth-shattering fun. Um, when I played The Mind, I was like, oh, this is so awesome. I can't wait to play it again. This was okay. Like you say, it's a great little palate cleanser, quick little in-between game. It's easy to teach. It's produced really nicely. Um, and it was it was interesting. Uh, my son has the expansion to it, and I want to play it. So I don't think it's ba- I don't think it's ugly, but I just it, it wasn't like oh this is what all I want to play right now. So yeah, not so bad. Yeah, the Welcome to the Dungeon by Yellow Games. Yeah, yeah. I wish it was more players. I wish it was five or six players. Um, I normally play two or three, and it's kind of like it's missing something. It's missing, you know, that kind of like. Do you, do you want to carry on all, you know, the ink and gold feeling? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it wasn't quite. The push your luck moved pretty quickly, and uh, all of a sudden one person passes, the next person passes, and boom. All of a sudden, oh, I'm stuck in the dungeon, and they just took two of my biggest weapons away. Okay. You know, so it can have kind of a take that that might not be very pleasant for some people. Yeah. All right, you're... First, what's your first game? Okay, my first game. I'm just trying to read my handwriting. <laughs> you might be able to get this within. You're trying to read your handwriting. Do you do you have do you read your palm to read it? What? No, no. I've written down. I'm gonna, just a scruffy. You're going to have a long life, Barry. I'm a scruffy writer. A plumber is going to be coming into your life soon. <laughs> He's coming Monday. Beware of the short T-shirt. Oh, no. Okay, oh, no. go ahead. Um, <laughs> yeah, this game um, is about kung fu fighting with chips. Everybody was kung fu fighting. Have you guessed it? Cha, 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 cha. It was fast as lightning. Have you guessed it yet? No, I'm just, I'm just ad-libbing. I'm oh, ad-libbing. Yeah, no, no, sorry, sorry, sorry. I, I thought you'd get it after yeah, that. I, no, I'm doing... Okay, everybody was kung fu fighting, is my guess. Every okay. No. Kung fu fighting. <laughs> kung fu fighting with chips. Kung fu fighting with... Chips. With with fists. Yeah. In this game, uh, players will be learning martial arts, so to speak. All right. And you're going to be taking chips... And uh, removing them from a, a big pool of chips, and these chips come in stacks, uh, and they're four different colours. And you're going to be um, uh, collecting them and placing them on your board. Uh, and what you're trying to do is you're trying to fill up these four coloured slots on your board as well. So that's one action you can do. You can take some chips. Another action you can do is you can move 
one type of colored chip from a top of a pile and add it to one of your slots, your four colored slots. Another action you can do is you, well, the thing is with that, you can do it from any player. You can take any player's piece or you can take one from the middle or you can take one from yours. Um, any corresponding colors of the same will go into that slot as well. Um, and there's another action which I've totally forgotten. <laughs> Splendor Kung Fu Edition. <laughs> <laughs> but the object of the game is to have not the least number of one type of the four colour chips because otherwise you're eliminated um, and then it's a case of the winner will be the player that has one pile of chips which is bigger than everyone else's crickets oh dear crickets you don't know I don't think I know the way you're describing it, anyway. Uh, it's a terrible description. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, I want to say something, but I won't. I'll, I, I'm going to, I'm going to, I don't, I'm going to say I don't know. I'm going to, um, I'm looking on your back shelf. It's not on your back shelf there. Okay, and it should be. So, is it Senshi? It is Senshi. Okay. <laughs> Well, you're you were describing the the chips as the as the different uh, attributes. Okay, go ahead. So, yeah, Senshi's... um a chip taking game it's it's a very thinky game where you're trying to outwit your opponent um by trying to make them do things that will help you and also at the same time you can be nasty to them by taking like a chip off their pile so to speak and add it to to yours which is it, 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 it's, it's just it's just a very very simple game where you're just moving chips around and you're trying to create piles of colours of chips. But it works really, really well. I've given away what I think about it. Hmm. <laughs> Sorry, I'm not prepared for this one. I should have started with the other game. <gasps> well, well, I I guess that you're calling it Senshi. And I guess that you think it is good. It is. I like it. It is good. I do like it. It's, it's a bit minimalist. And uh, the, the the theme feels tacked on, but it's a it's it's a nice kind of puzzle game. Where have you played it yet? I sadly I have not. I have taken it to the last two conventions, fully intending to play it with two with three to four players wanting to play it, and just the way it's gone. Yeah, two players is not so good. Three or four players is a lot more fun because there's a lot more interaction. You 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 basically. As I said, you're trying to make piles of colours, but the way to make these piles of colours is, number one, you've got three spots on your board where you can stack piles from the centre. Uh, number two, whenever you take one chip from the top of a pile and add it to one of your four colours piles that you have, any other colours that you have on those piles get added to that pile as well. But the thing is, all the other players can do the same thing. And so you really have to be observant of what the other players are doing and what piles they've got. And there's sometimes this this backstabbing where you're just like, okay, on my turn, I'm just going to take that chip from the top of that pile there of yours and put it here. And uh, it can really screw someone over because if you've got three piles and on top of all three piles it's the same colour... And if that player decides that they're going to push one of those into their coloured piles, they get to take the two other pile, the two tiles from the top of their other piles on top. So they they're collecting three basically at the same time. Mm. Um, and you can really screw people over by taking their chips if you see they're trying to set up a chain. Um, it's it's a really simple game. It's it, as I said, the theme feels tacked on. I don't even bother with the theme. That's why I was a bit. Uh, having trouble with the uh, explaining the game, but it was it's just basically a chip taking game, and you've got three different actions. I can't remember what they exactly are, but um, it's just taking chips and, and you're trying to create piles, and it works really well. It's just a fun, abstract game. Yeah, definitely. I have to get that to the table. I've been wanting to and just haven't got to it because it does look really fun. I watched the video of it. And then I've uh, I've seen some people get do some reviews on it that really feel like it's a, a great game too. So I look forward to seeing your board games. Everybody should review on it. Oh, that'll be a long way away. Uh, I have to go through the pile. I might have to do that quick sooner than later. I think basically. Okay, I I for the last game then that we'll take a look at. Okay, um, you've done two, right? I've done one. Oh, you've just done one. 
So you're going to do one more after this. I thought you just did one. I've just done one. I've done Senchi. What was the other oh, game then? Did you guess it? No. Mm. We, I had. I was talking about my game. Yeah, you were talking about your game. I didn't talk about your it's, game. Okay, the game that... <laughs> <laughs> and, and, and this is where editing is a beautiful thing. Mm. So is Mother Nature. <laughs> so I played a game on... I just celebrated my 33rd anniversary with my beautiful wife, Joan. And we went up to the north... Uh, shore up of in Duluth, Minnesota, and took a couple days uh, together just before I went to Grand Rapids, so on the first for the end of August. And I took this game with. We were able to pick this up. Um, interesting about this bit game is it has a lot to do with set collection. It's set in the 1960s in a large city. Uh, it has something to do with cabs. Uh, it's very quick to play. Ding! Um, I was able to pick it up at a big box store, surprisingly. Ooh. Yes. I don't think that's surprising at all. It plays two to four players. Mm-hmm. Um, it literally takes about 10, 15 minutes. It's mm-hmm. from a very pr- prolific company. And so, do we have any guesses from the chat? No, but I know what it is. Tell me what it is. Is it Ticket to Ride? The small new taxi edition. New York. Thank you, Dan. Dan got it right. Ticket to ride New York. (laughs) There it is. In all its glory. Uh, Really cute little game. Artwork is fantastic, as you'd expect from Days of Wonder. You're using cabs to get uh, destinations. Uh, I've only played it at two players so you some of the routes that are double trains you only only one of those are active so that makes it a little bit more tricky uh but you know i we actually felt like we played a ticket to ride game it didn't feel like uh there was much less missing in a sense it just played quicker we played it twice that's fast paced uh the destination cards are easy to figure out and Basically, it's the same type of ticket to ride rules that everybody knows. So, what do you think? I think about that. Hmm. Okay. Um, I'm gonna say that you think it was good. I think it was good. Yay! Ta-da! Yeah. It. Uh, I. We just felt like we were playing ticket to ride, and it was so great to be able to play that quick version of it. Okay. Uh, where we didn't have to set up the great big box. It was easy to transport, and for what what it is. You know, it's not like, it's not like, oh, this is the best game ever. Mm-hmm. But it was like, no, this is a good game. I mean, they refined it in a way that made it quick, still engaging. Um, I thought it was just fine. Okay. And, uh, you know, it, it, there's so many of these games that you can say are good. But, you know, we don't have a rating on, for a first impression that says, oh, this is amazing. Great game. The best ever. Yeah. Um, but I would I wouldn't say not so bad that ah uh, not really it's okay I would I say no it's a good game. Would you rather play a normal game or that a normal version of Ticket? Um, well, it depends on the setting. Um, generally speaking, I would rather play a full version of Ticket to Ride with the family. Mm. But taking this on a trip uh, with just a couple of us or going camping, I this is great. Oh, cool! All right then. No worries. Super. Yeah, I thought it was good. Okay. Right. All right. My turn. Your turn. Picture, if you will, a barren desert, some cactuses, some... Cac- cacti. 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 Yeah, sorry. God. Yeah. Go, cac- go back cac- to school. Cacti. Um, and a horse riding along with its rider, and he's got a message. Dun, 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 and he's trying dun, to get dun. from one town to another, but technology is advancing and players are going to be using technology to set up the the next level of communication. You're trying to connect two uh, outback western towns together with your new telegraph system. And you're going to be doing this uh, with these tiles. And on your turn, you've got a choice of two actions. You're going to be either picking these tiles up and revealing them because they're all going to be hidden from you. Everyone's got the same tiles. And you can either place them onto your player board or you can build them directly if you have the resources. Or the second action is you can build 
any of these buildings which you've got on your player board. Again, paying the resources unless um, you set up a chain reaction because these buildings are kind of like interconnected. You have like um, the saloon, which is next to the mayor's office. And if it's in in the, the right order, you can build one, the second one for free. And if you have... Um, the sheriff's office next to that you can build that for free Um, and so basically you're just trying to connect two towns together on a map with just a big chain of your buildings hmm it's not it's not Carson City Mm. nope hmm there was an older version of the game which came out 2003 I think and this is like a, a new version of the game with a different setting. <laughs> Dan Daniels Splendor Western Edition. What's it going to be next, Dan? Is it going to be Well, I don't know. There's a couple couple western theme games that are coming out, They're like Western Legends, Dan mentioned that. I have that, but I don't think that's it. Splendor Huddersfield Edition. <laughs> <laughs> so I guess I don't know. What what is the game? The game is called US Telegraph. U.S. Telegraph. La, 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 la. Yes. I think I saw something about this yes. now that you say that. I've put pictures up. I've done okay. a video. Yes. That's what it is. Yes, that's what it is. Yes, this is a re-edition of the game Attica, which I said come out, what, 2003. Uh, this is done by Super Meeple. It's the same game. It's just a different setting. It has uh, tiles, player boards, cards, it's a standard affair. Um, as I said, you've got two simple actions that you can do. Um, and you can build with the resources that are on the cards in your hand, or you can build uh, with the resources which are on the map, as long as that building is next to those resources. So uh, you're going to be building little settlements, which are going to expand into big towns. And as I said, you're trying to make a, a route. But the thing is, other players are going to be blocking you off because they're all trying to do... Everyone's trying to do the same thing. So if you're playing a four-player game, there's four cities... And so everyone's trying to get from one city to the other. And you can be really nasty and you can block, you know, you can build a big clump of buildings together in front of the city and that will block players off. But there are ways around that. You can, if you deplete one of your piles of tiles, you get to add another tile to the map, which will give you more room. So you can go around these blockades and eventually, hopefully... If people don't keep blocking you, you'll be able to connect to two cities. Again, there's another fallback. If you nobody can connect cities, it's the first player to actually build all of their buildings uh, onto the main board. That will win you the game. It's 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 very simple. It's very quick. It's not quick. It's about ticket to ride quick. But um, hmm. that sounds good. When when will it be available for distribution? That's out over here already. I don't think we have U.S. distribution I, on it yet, I don't do we? Think you have a U.S. I don't know. You, co- you said the company's name was Super Meeple. Yes, yeah, Super Meeple. Well, I'm going to say that you say it's good because I know Antiki is a game that you like. Antiki, Attica, Attica, same thing. I've never played Attica. <laughs> Antiki, Antiki. I don't know what you're talking about. Yeah, Attica, Attica. You love that game. Speechless. It's it's teetering on the good and not so bad. It is an enjoyable game to play, but at the same time, it's I don't uh, know. The, 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 there's there's little things about the game which are annoying. Player error is annoying um, because the two actions are pretty similar. Um, a, a lot of things that will happen while you're playing the game. The, the first action where you're taking one of your tiles and revealing it and going ooh. I got this building and then being able to build it directly onto the board again paying the resources will make you think that you're actually choosing the second action which is building because then you'll pick up a building from your building board and you're kind of like cheating in a way but it's just like a simple it's a simple mistake which kind of destroys the the feeling of the game um that that's that's my my biggest bugbear is is the rules are very simple but at the same time mistakes can be made and the, the game just kind of goes a bit skew with when you're playing it sometimes and you're like you get you get frustrated when you see someone doing something wrong and then you challenge them and they go no I'm doing that and it's like, oh, I'm coming here to play a game and chew bubblegum and I'm all out chewing gum yeah 
Yeah, I could see too. And when you, when you mentioned blocking and and having that type of mechanism in there too, especially if you're trying to build something, that can get really frustrating. I, uh, there's times I'm okay with that, and other times I'm not okay with yeah. it. I enjoy it. it. It's fun in that regards, blocking. And again, you know, if you're playing two play game, yeah, because it's just constantly you blocking them and then blocking you. Playing a three or four play game is a lot more interesting because there are sneaky, devious people that will build things here and then build things over there and then something there and then they connect without you looking and they'll be encouraging you, the other players to, oh, no, he's almost made it. Go on, block them, block them. It's your turn, block them. So it's like, <laughs> you know, this kind of interaction which is verbal outside of the game, which is, you know, encouraging players to do actions which will then put themselves in a better position to win the game. Um, and, and that I really enjoy. It's just like the, the banter and the back and forth of, you know, uh, they've almost won. They go, well, I can't do anything. I can't block them. You're going to have to block them. And then they go, bang. <laughs> I lied. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Uh, but, um, yeah, I enjoy the game. But as I said, it's the, 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 the little human errors which keep cropping up in every game that I've played which kind of distract me from it. Yeah, I'm totally with you. All right, well, that's great. That's the good, the not-so-bad, and the ugly. We discussed a few games. i give you guys an idea to take a look at them, see if you'd like them. And we're going to go into our brand-new segment that Barry's going to make this amazing drop for that is not ready yet. But we love this idea of called this segment The Woods of Evergreen. of evergreen we are going to go for a walk in the woods of evergreen just outside of the castle of babylon mm-hmm. just strolling along memory lane looking at evergreen games that think they have survived the test of time and guess what we're gonna start with the year 2005 Ba-ba. we We each have chosen three games that are games that we are still playing and we would still play today. So they are in the woods of Evergreen of Babylon, meaning we still enjoy them. Yes, yes. We're we're, we're, we're having a look around and go, oh, there's a nice fir tree and there's a pine and some, oh, there's some mushrooms there. Let's pick some mushrooms. Oh, what's this box hidden here? Oh, I remember this game. I love playing this game. I still play this game. And we know that games are improving and there's a lot of new games that kind of play off of older games, but that doesn't mean that we don't feel that they uh, are evergreen titles to us, and that means they still have the test of time and found it into our woods of evergreen. Yeah. So, with that, what is your first of your three games that are in the woods of evergreen we're not rating them now no we're not rating them we're just we're just we're doing oh, like an honorable mention um and you did mention that we're only going to say one of the three today no we're going to do three each yes but what all in the same podcast yes we... because we'll we'll come back to it and do another three because there's a lot of them okay if you say so okay yes. I, I wanted i wanted to, to, to delve a little bit deeper deeper underground into the caverns underneath the roots uh but anyway okay then let's start with one of the popular ones that we've already spoken about on the show which Mm. is ticket to ride europe 2005 was the year of ticket to ride europe um which is like the the base game that i have and then i got some expansions but um, I, I love playing Ticket to Ride. It's such a simple pleasure. Um, there's no uh, error, player errors apart from, oh, no, I should have built that train there instead of here because you've built it there now. And it's like, oh, I'm blocked. I've got to go the way around. Um, it's just elegant, jolly to look at. And I, I just love just putting it on the table and just going, let's play. And we don't even need to say anything. You know, you so- just play. What did you like better about Ticket to Ride Europe? Uh, what, in comparison to the other Ticket to Rides? Yes. I haven't played the other Ticket to Rides. I've only got Europe, the base game, plus the, the little maps. 
Oh, really? Uh, you know, like India and United Kingdom. But, uh, yeah, I just, you know, if you've got one base game, you don't need them all. Yeah, and I'm, I'm being as you said Ticket to Ride Europe, I'm going to actually say Ticket to Ride Europe as well. Mm. Um, uh, so we kind of knocked them both out together. We, we may have some duplicates here. We haven't talked to each other about which one. But I pulled Ticket to Ride Europe and I like Ticket to Ride Europe from the standpoint that it adds a little bit of variability with the passengers and the and the train houses, you know, that type of situation. Mm-hmm. Um, it it was harder for me coming from North America, knowing the destination routes and not knowing the geography quite as well as the U.S. version. Yeah. So I cut my teeth on the U.S. version, but. Back in the day when, when Days of Wonders at Christmas time, you would buy one one game and you would get another one for free. Wow. Yeah, and this happened for several years. It was kind of a customer uh, uh, loyalty program. And, and anyway, when this came along, it just added that little extra notch. You know, it's got the tunnels and, and where you've got to have the locomotives and just some of that little extra complexity that just added a little bit of a... A uh, zip to it, you know. I mm. I love the Ticket to Ride Marklin version is one of my favorites. I love that. Yeah, apparently that's the best one. Yeah, I love that one. But I, you know, I've got a whole bunch of the I I've got the the Nordic countries and and I have the Asia map and and uh, whatever do, I have the uh uh duh, it's the wrong <laughs> it's the, I'm looking at them but it's the wrong language side. <laughs> <laughs> I have a whole bunch of them. And uh, anyway, zerg, I love, zerg. Love, love, yeah, Zug, Yoman, Yama, Uni, and Peus, Bas, Yabba, Dabba, Do, and Zug, Um, Zug, Zug, yeah. Um, Zug, yeah. Um, Zug, yeah, anyway, so anyway, yeah, great choice. Okay, I'm going to give you my uh, extra one then. Now I'm going to go first. We're going to revolve back and Yay. forth. Yeah, might as well. Okay. And I'm just going to – I'm going to give a little description so that people can maybe guess. Uh, the description that I'm going to have uh, is this is a game uh, that has been redone now in a newer version. And it's from one of my favorite designers, uh, Bruna Catala. Um, this has these cool little um, uh, astronauts that are going to colonize – um, a planet and there is a mission involved to colonize this planet and it was recently redone by Fantasy Flight Games and yeah. or Wind Rider and I love the game so do we have any guesses about this? It was Bruno Fiduti as no. well as it's Bruno, Bruno Fiduti. Fiduti too? Yeah. Yeah, Fiduti was on there. Yeah. Fruity Fruity. Fruity Fruity. Tutti Fruity. Tutti Fruity. Oh, Plays Rudy. Two, two to six players. Had a steampunk theme. One of uh, Sam Healy's favorite games. It is... It's Mission Red Planet. Mission Red Planet. We just Yay. recently played this. We had a fun experience because we were playing on a game topper and we had our adventure mat out. And we had the whole game set up. We had all the little astronauts out there and we're just getting ready to go. And we all looked at one another and went, eh... We should be playing on the space mat. Mm. And so we thought, but we've already got the game out. So what did we do? We put it all back in the box, took the adventure mat off, put the space mat back on, set up the game, played the game, had a super fun time. And at the end of the game, we all went, that was so much better that we played it on the space mat. Because it just it it just felt like we were in space playing Mission Red Planet, launching our... our, our uh, our, our our rockets and you know there's a little bit of take that with that game where you can kind of move people around you're trying to collect all these uh resources on the planet to get points and it's played over these three rounds and you've got these cards that you get to play and and other people have the same type of deck of card and you know it's just got this fantastic uh back and forth scenario love mission red planet great family weight game uh really big hit for me oh I haven't played it. I've heard lots of good things about it. Yeah. I can see why people still play that game because the, the me- mechanisms in the game are very, very, uh, very family style. 
Yeah, it's it's fantastic. We love it. Really well produced by Fantasy Flight Games. Okay, my second game um, is a kind of another family style game. It's a push your luck game hmm. where you're um, adventurers exploring. This has also had a, a re edition, a new new artwork, and it's changed names a couple of times as well. Oh, uh, um, so yeah, you're adventurers exploring a temple looking for treasure. And oh, it's I know. the bravest of you that will survive and take the most treasure home. So, I, I didn't think it was 2005, but is it ink and gold? It is. Well done, Dan, as well. Wow. I love that game. Oh, yes. It's such a simple game to get out and play, and it, it pushes your luck. This, this, as I said earlier, <clears throat> this is a lot more simpler, more fun version of Welcome to the Dungeon. Um, Welcome to the Dungeon has a little bit more of a complicated element to it, which, you know, when you're pushing your luck, you're pushing the other players' lucks. Uh, but in this, you you are really pushing your luck um, and engaging the other players. And it's such a simple game to teach and such a simple game to play. I just wish there was another way to play it. I'm not too happy with the, the card thing. I wish there was something else that it could do. Um... Maybe well, an it's always, so, soon as that soon as that double double thing comes out, you know, if you've whether it's the curse token or what whatever those you know the snake, as soon as that second one comes out, then you're done. You've died. So do you do you take what you have and get out of there, or do you yeah keep going? And sometimes you can really we whenever we're doing gateway games where we have friends come over, that's one of the games we pull out regularly, and uh, we have the the little mini box version from Eagle Griffin Games. And uh, it's fantastic. Yeah, I like it, Dan. Coin. Brilliant. Uh, okay, so we'll play that when you come over. Cool. <laughs> yep. As well, well as <laughs> Jamaica. So we have another uh, game that, that I saw, and this is a game in a category that I generally do not like. Um, I generally do not like co-ops. Okay. Um, it's, it's, there's a few co-ops that I do like, one of the things that I like about a co-op is that either there is a possibility of winning individually or if there's a hidden trader. Aha. Uh-huh. And so I love hidden trader things. I love Battlestar Galactica, you know, that game. Uh, some games like that. Well, this game came out in 2005, and it was from one of my favorite uh, designers again, Bruna Catala. Um, and it comes from another very famous company, incredibly well produced. And guess, it looks like we have some guesses. He's on the boom, Dan. Wow. Yeah, Dan is like spot on. <laughs> it is Shadows over, over Camelot. Huddersfield. <laughs> I, I tell you what, we love this game in our family. <laughs> we play this all the time. I didn't even hear catch that. <laughs> I said shadows over Huddersfield. Oh, over Huddersfield. <laughs> and and Dan is a genius and he's very humble. He's a humble genius from Huddersfield. Humble Hughes, that's what we call him. Well, I love the fact that you're going in there and you're trying to, you know, take out all these different little missions and you're trying to get that this Excalibur sword. You're trying to go out and fight the Picts and the Saxons and you know, you've got these catapults that are running around the castle, but if you get too many of them, you're all going to die. So we got to take those out. And, you know, if you've got a hidden traitor there, you never know if you do or not. And mm-hmm. uh, you're playing these cards and every one of us has has a special ability that we maybe one of us gets to give a card to another uh, person that would help our troop. Or, you know, there's different a variety of different uh, special abilities that each character has. And I love playing this game with six players. Um, I've played with the Merlin expansion that didn't come out in the same year, but um, where you can play up to seven people and have two hidden traders potentially. You'd mm. have eight, eight total, and they get random. So it's possible that one of them is not a hidden trader, but you're going to have at least one. Um, it's just a fantastic game, incredibly well produced, beautiful little minis. Great card play, great interaction, even, I would say, with gateway players that have a little more time, because you can play this game in a couple hours, uh, but you can bring new people in, and they'll they'll get this game. Mm. Yeah, I've played it a couple of times. I, not enough to, to say, yes, this is definitely belongs in the forest, in the wood, sorry, but um, I, 
you hear about this game a lot and uh, it's constantly being played. So I think it deserves a, a tree named after it. Yes, the the wood of Shadow of Camelot in the third tree from the left. <laughs> tree from the left. <laughs> <laughs> third tree from the left from the tree that smells of bear piss. <laughs> uh, that's that's because Dan has been in the woods. Oh no, he has seen it. <laughs> engrave it. Just engrave it into the. That's tree. why Dan is guessing all this is because he okay. has been in the wood of evergreen. So what is your last one? I wonder if Dan will get this one. This is. Uh, I mean, most of the games that we talked about are like family style games and games that people can introduce quite easily. This game is not so. In this case, this is a really. Big game, and if you've got the expansions like I have, this oh, can be a me, m- me, massive me. game. Go on. I, I, I already know. Go on, then. Are you really? Go on. What do you think? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to tell you. Twilight Imperium 3rd Edition. Oh, I've played it once, so I can't really say it's an evergreen for me. No. <laughs> oh, so I'm, I'm wrong. You're wrong. Ah, okay, keep going. Okay, yeah, it's a game which involves a monster, um, and you're trying to defeat it. You are looking for clues, um, you're wandering around, you're having adventures, things are happening to you, there are cultists that are causing panic and stress in the streets, and you're trying just to make it to the end of the game and finally defeat, or maybe even before you defeat the, this big monster, you're actually going to close all the doors to stop them coming through into your dimension. Hmm. Gosh. I don't... I don't know what this is. Oh, such... It's a third edition that's just come out as well. Wow. (laughs) Yeah, I was... I was like, wow, a third edition of this game? Do we need it? Yes. (laughs) Well, I... I don't know. I have no clue. Arkham Horror. Oh, of course. <laughs> Arkham Horror. Second edition come out in this year, 2005. Um, th- this was the biggest game that I had owned at the time because all the other games were kind of like hour-long games, and this is like anything from five minutes to, to six hours. Um, you'll take on a random personality uh, in the early 1930s and walk around the streets of Arkham trying to survive monster attacks and trying to finally get through to Cthulhu and, uh, and wipe his ass with some um, newspaper journals. I don't know what you're going to wipe his ass with. Corn, so. corn cobs. Corn, corn cobs. cobs. That, that and, will stop him coming through. Yeah. And peach wrappers. <laughs> they sting as well, corn cobs. Yeah, um, just, just when you put rubbing alcohol on it. <laughs> I was going to say Berkey's Happy Mouth on it, you know. Yeah, that'll do it too. Butter that'll give and you Happy some, Mouth. That'll give you some serious butt hurt. <laughs> but yeah, I I've always loved this game. It's not an easy game to get to the table, but it's still an evergreen for me because I always think of like, well, when I've got this time, I'm going to get it out, and I've got this lovely big table now that I can put it on, and I've tried it a couple of times, and I can put like a couple of the expansions on, and there's still room on the table for, for a couple of players. It's just a great storytelling mirror trash game where it's just dice and, and luck of card draws, but I enjoy it. I enjoy the, 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 the stories that you tell afterwards of, you know, you died in the first five minutes of a game. <laughs> that, that, that you know that was my quickest game. You spend twenty minutes setting out with the components and everything, and shuffling the decks, and then after you've moved a couple of times, you're dead. <laughs> There's no way for you to come back. <laughs> well, and this this game is designed by King Richard Launius. Oh yes, and uh, I just had the opportunity to play a game, a new game that King Richard uh, has designed at Grand Con. It's the new Batman, uh, the adventure series game. Anima- yeah, the animated series one. The yes. animated series, yeah. And Richard, he's a good friend of mine. He's uh, This was really his big prolific design, you know, and then, of course, Eldritch Horror. And I have yet to play Arkham Horror. Uh, you might want to skip it and jump to the new one then. Yeah. Yeah. To, to Eldridge. 
A little quicker dice. I haven't played Eldridge, um, but people say, yeah, it's quicker. But the, I'm talking about third edition Arkham. They, they, they've made it more kind of like the story is more integral and more relatable because the, the events that happen in Arkham Horror are just totally random. You know, you could be in the bar and... Yeah, yeah. But I like that. And Kabuki... Kabuki Kid is in the house. And that's it. Thanks for watching. Goodbye. Yeah, it was a great show. We're so glad we had this time together. <laughs> it's now it's time to go. No. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Dan, that, that's for another show. So uh, wait with bated breath and I will tell you exactly how I feel about the new animated Batman game. And uh, does it have those really 3D components or was that just for the show? No, no, we had we had all of its glory. And that's we, in the box. And we played it in on a Adler game topper uh, with Kay King, who is not Kabuki Kid, but maybe she is. Yeah. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. <sighs> all right. So there well, you go. That, that's our new segment, The Woods of Evergreen. And we looked at some, some games that are evergreen to us. Ticket to Ride Europe was a choice that both Barry and I picked. I picked Mission Red Planet. And Barry picked... Ink and Gold. Ink and Gold. And then I picked Shadows Over Camelot from Days of Wonder. And Barry picked... Arkham Horror. Arkham Horror. (laughs) Uh, Kabuki Kid, laugh out loud. It's not me, I swear. Yeah, that's exactly (laughs) what Kay would say. Do you agree with our picks? Do you think that these trees in, in Evergreen Woods should have these games engraved onto them? Or should we just leave the trees be and be real hippies and just hug them? Yeah, exactly. Now, we have 13 years, and by the time we get to 2018, it'll actually be 2018, so we have 14 years of picking these games from each year. And, and if then we carry gonna... on at this rate at the moment where we do one podcast every two months, we should be fine. <laughs> we'll, be, we'll be retired, and it'll be awesome. Yeah. And we'll be able to go back. We might not be able to remember them, though, by that time. No. <laughs> yeah, because, you know, things set in at that point. But we'll come back then to 2005 and do three more. Ooh. Ooh. Yes. yes. Okay. I love, I love this idea of going back, though, and because there's so many games on our shelf, just like we talked about in our last episode, yeah. that we love. Well, look over there. Can you see that? What's that? That's Jamaica on my Jamaica. table. Jamaica! Played it last night. And how old is that game? That game is 11 years old. 11 years old. These are games 13 years old. That blows my mind mm. that, that that's how long since I've got those games. But anyway. So we're going to move on to our last segment. Moving this show right along and go right into our babble topic. And now it's time for the Babble 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 Berkey and Badger's Board Game Babble Here in Babalot Everyone's a board gamer Everyone that guy over there you see that guy cleaning up the the horse poo that's a board gamer. See that guy over there mm. ma- making the horseshoes for the horse? He's a board gamer as well. Everyone and is the guy, a board gamer. The guy fixing the loo? <laughs> the loo too is a board gamer. Okay, good. Yes. Yes, they've even made the loo into a game itself. But um, that's a story and a game for another time. <laughs> <laughs> and um, I've had... I've, had some bad luck in Babylon because there's lots of things that have been happening. The local game store here in Babylon has closed down uh, after 12 years of, you know... Oh, so are you saying Babylon is in France and not in Minnesota? Okay, okay, right. Uh, possibly. Okay, let's... You, they, let's what, what people don't know about Babylon... Yeah, but you... Is that there, there's an underground t- underground tunnel... That connects it. We are a multifaceted kingdom. But you are the king, and you live in the castle, and you've got like a, a whole city inside the castle where I live outside the castle, and I just come in time after time. So I'm in in amongst the the, the muck and the marketplaces and the the down and out. We we've put your cottage by the dung gate. So in my part of the the Babylon, yeah, <laughs> my local game store, which is about you know about. 
20 minutes walk next to um, that place where you're not supposed to go in with the naked ladies. Um, th- th- it's closed down. And that game store was running for 12 years. And they would do, like, occasionally about two or three times a month a Friday night game night. And so I, like, I've lost a place to play. Uh, they also did Sunday Discovery Days as well, which was run by my my good friend, Mr. Tappy Mocket, who is a prolific board game designer and board game reviewer here in France, who um, I'm looking forward to seeing very soon. But, wait a minute, no, he's moving away as well. He's moving out of Babylon. This can't be happening. Oh, no. And my best friend who lives just around the corner from me, who's a, my favourite board gaming buddy, he's moved away. So I'm running out of places to play games. <sighs> oh, yeah, I've got my board game group as well. I, I set up a board game group. And unfortunately, because of my workload, because Berkey's got me running back and forth here, um, I, I, I've got no time to, to run the club. So I've put the club on pause for now. So... I, Ah, things things are things are bad for me. I've got no board game group. I've got a phone which I shouldn't have because this is medieval times. It's making dingy sounds. It's, okay, it's actually the 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 bells in my hat that are jingling. That was bling. Okay, um, so yeah, I'm having a bad time at the moment. I can't get to play games with my friends unless I invite them round my house, and that's a hmm. rare thing because we don't have a toilet now. That's always tough. Yes, absolutely, always <laughs> tough. <laughs> so board game groups are they a good thing a bad thing or do you run a board game group do you have fun with board game groups or do you prefer having private kind of things privately i think one of the things when we're talking about board game groups there's a variety of ways that these groups start mm. okay so uh, a lot of people have developed a group of friends that they've played board games with, you know, for years. Um, I have friends that I played board games with from high school, you know, and that was 30 years ago. So, I mean, it's a it's a, a unique scenario. And I think the thing about board game groups, just like what you shared earlier, they are very fluid because they change because of different situations that come into people's lives um for myself i played a lot of board games coming out of high school and into early adulthood um but when i got married for especially when we had young children board games went out the door for a while we just were not playing very many board games that was before you know this renaissance of gaming happened of course but it wasn't until about six years ago that I became really, really immersed in the hobby at, at the level that we are now. Um, but really about 15 years ago, you know, right in this time that we're starting to do our Woods of Evergreen, where this renaissance started to happen with Settlers of Catan and all these games, all of a sudden there were games that were very, very good and very thoughtful and new and innovative that allowed us to say, hey, you got to come over and try this new game. And so generally, we would start with our friends, but when we started to see that dynamic change, all of a sudden it was like, how do we get more people to play games with, right? Mm -hmm. And so people were starting up these meetup groups where they would gather people together. Uh, Just recently, our good friend Jesse Shakey, you know, just a couple years ago, he started a group at the local Fergus Falls library to bring people in to play games there. And then all of a sudden, conventions started popping up all over the place. And we would meet people through conventions to play board games. And some of those experiences, they turned on to online groups playing board games. Yeah. Dan, Dan's written that uh, he set up a board game group called The Noble Order of Huddersfield. Um, and uh, they've been going for five years now. And the group started from eight people and is now 40 to 50 people a week. Which is incredible. Wow. I started. That's fantastic. I started my group about four years ago uh, with eight people, and we still have eight people. <laughs> and nobody wants to take responsibility apart from me. So it's me that brings the games. It's me that opens the room. We have. We. I mean, I've got free access to a nice big room, which is about a five-minute walk from my house, and nobody comes. Well, eight hmm. people come. Seven people come. But um, well, that that's part of it. You know what Dan just said. He said the fluidity, fluidity 
is why I like a big game group. I actually ideally like a small group of friends, but it's a bit fragile. And that's what I found happening as well. Everybody has got different stages of life. You know, mm. when, when my son was at home, we had regular gaming night because he likes to read rules. <laughs> <laughs> Good night, Dad. I'm going to bed now. Oh, can you lend me the rule book for uh, <laughs> Galaxy Truckers? I need something funny. I jest there, but I mean, it, there, there was, you know, that that changed when he went to college. So he wasn't available to play as often. So that changed the dynamic of our group. Um, I have a group of, of guys that are engineers at Otter Tail Power Company. And they used to come over every Tuesday night, and we would play games. But there became a point where I started doing media, and I'm getting all the new games, and I'm wanting to try all these new games. And that started to get a little wearisome for people. Like, hey, we're always playing a new game. Can't we just play Power Grid? Yeah. You know, can't we just play this? Yeah, absolutely we can. Um, But the dynamic of groups is very interesting and like dan says they can be fragile because you've got a lot of different personality types right yep you know you get that one guy in the group that's always just trying to put the screws to everybody or is maybe playing a little atypical um you know that can grate on different people's nerves uh or other other situations that are that are you know you get one guy that he hates everything you got and any negativity mm. Um, generally speaking, our game groups haven't been I- any of that. We've had really good gaming people who are considerate of one another, enjoy being with each other. But life changes, right? It does, yes. Yeah, I mean, at the moment, it's a lot of little Robin uh, being a handful. We can't really take him to the club. So my wife has to stay home, and she's like the secretary of the club. And she normally ex- Blaine's games as well as myself and obviously that's probably why people don't come because I'm terrible in French um, yes they speak French in the, the south quarter of Babylon it's like I don't know it was invaded maybe yes <laughs> Ben says that he's lucky he's got three groups one group of friends about around about four to seven player people uh, one is a local designing group uh, oh, that's awesome. And there's usually about 10 or 20 people. And there's also a blind playtesting group, which is nice. I kind of like had that as well because I had the game store. There was the game. There's three game clubs in the big city next to me. But one, two of them, one of them's closed down. One of them nobody goes to anymore because the president is a bit weird. Um, and so there's only like one really popular, popular group. And I still haven't been there. So, um, yeah, I have the opportunity, but as you say, life gets in the way. Our family is kind of like in the way. And the only chance that I get to play regularly is either with the family, like I did last night with Jamaica, or if I invite some friends around, which I've made by being at groups. You know, people that you just click with, people that have got the same kind of um, the idea of what a what fun can we have by playing the game not people for me it's not people that just look at the pieces for half an hour before moving one um luckily <laughs> but you know people that like to have a laugh and take the piss out of me being english and saying things wrong um i really enjoy uh and it's that kind of humor and and back and forth and it and it takes time to develop that chemistry and that's why a person coming into a gaming group it can be intimidating for them yeah. depending on their personality you know I'm I'm very outgoing, so I will play games with anybody and can and easily move right into a gaming situation. But even even in that scenario where I'm I'm personable and able to interact, um, going in that there's still that slight amount of okay, I don't know my boundaries yet with all the people that I'm playing with. Yeah. You know, and you know what I mean by that. It's like you know I don't want to if you're joking around too much, it might bother them. Yeah. You know, where, whereas you and I sit down, we'll joke in between. It'll take longer to play the game, but we're having a blast doing that. Yeah, I don't think those guys from Wiz Kids are going to play with us again. <laughs> <laughs> in fact, I don't think they're going to send us any games either. <laughs> no hero kicks for you, boys. But yeah. no, that was fun. Yeah, but I think I think it's one of those. It takes time to develop chemistry in any relationship, and gaming groups is the same way. And and so if I have my preference, 
I want to go to my daughter's house up in up in Alexandria. It's an hour away, and play with my son-in-laws and my daughters. And we love that, and and it's a familiar place. Uh, playing here at home with my group, um, I prefer people to come out to my home, and I can entertain and have beverages and snacks and and show hospitality and and enjoy the the fellowship and and the game. Um, but there's other times, you know, it's nice like. Tomorrow, Saturday, I'm actually going to Alexandria to play with Kelly Hughes. He's oh, yeah. a professor at the college there that helped us at our at our. You met Kelly, yeah. Helped us helped us at our booth. Uh, he's going to teach us all Firefly. Horseradish Hughes. That's what we call him. <laughs> Horseradish Hughes. <laughs> That's a mouthful. And so I, I I think that he knows the game really well. He's going to teach it, and we're going to play at their store, and that's going to be a different environment. I don't know any of those people except Kelly, Mm -hmm. but I thought, you know, this will be kind of a fun thing, and who knows? Maybe I will make, and this is the thing, who knows? Maybe you'll meet that next best friend. Yeah. Maybe you meet that next person that, oh, you like this kind of game? I love that kind of game. The relationships I have in this hobby now would have never happened had we not had these interactions. Precisely. I, that's how I made all my friends when I first moved to Babalot here in the South End. Uh, <laughs> it was a case of, you know, I only had the family and the cousins and the aunties and the uncles. And that didn't help me. But, you know, going to a gaming group, meeting people, listening to them explain rules and them helping me out with my my French... Uh, it's been it's been immense, and I've uh, I've made some great friends. And as I said, they come round from time to time. Um, there's friends that I'd like to have come round, but you know they live so far away. We have to make it like an a day event thing um, because we have the same mentality. Um, and like when we go to the game group, that's the thing I wanted to say is when you go to a game group, do you still play with those same people, or do you try and mingle with some of the other players and you know spread your your humor and your personality? Yeah, you know, for me, I just try to be myself. But, you know, Dan says uh, he's made magnificent friends through gaming. And I remember the first time I met Dan at Dice Tower Con, and we played Baseball Highlights 2045. And and I I enjoyed watching Dan's segments on Board Game Breakfast. But when we actually got to sit down and play with one another, it was a deeper connection between us. We just really enjoyed each other's company. It was a lot of fun. And... And I think that's the possibilities that happen with game groups. And so we're always trying to expand the game group so that if somebody does leave the group for whatever reason, life happens. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I think, you know, that I so I think you always do want to bring new people in. If and, 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 you know, you can vet people, so to speak, that you're playing with people that you want to play games with. I mean, there's not every you didn't laugh at my joke out. Out now! You gotta <laughs> laugh. <laughs> not not everybody, you know, fits a group. And yeah. you know, I've I've been in a few situations where I've had a particular uh, individual that that I really don't want to invite to my home. Um, he, he's a younger person that's a little bit off, and it it's hard to play games with him. So if I were playing a, a, to reach out to him on a personal level to, to, to play game would be a different thing than bringing him into the group mm. because it would kind of disrupt the group a little bit. Yeah. Um, so there's, there's different things like that. Um, yes. Kabuki kid. I just backed football highlights, 2052 from Eagle Griffin. And uh, I'm excited about it. I played an early prototype of that game uh, with Alex Goldsmith at the miniature market superstore opening. And that was really cool. Hmm. So Kabuki has game night monthly at our house. I thought she'd be more kind of like everywhere. I figured she'd be playing every night. Yeah, the amount of she's knowledge too, she's, that she's too amassed. busy with. She's too busy with podcasts. Yeah, probably that's probably how she gets all her knowledge on board games. She's never actually played a game. She just listens to people talk about games, and then she thinks she's played the games. And that's then when she comes on our show, she guesses all the answers right because. Hmm. No, I've seen Kay play games. <laughs> <laughs> no, we love you, Kabuki. Well, the the thing that I about gaming groups, you know, we've had Rick Ortloff, uh, he's in the chat here, and Jesse Shaky, and they live. You know, Jesse works a lot, and his kids are in hockey during the winter, so he isn't able to be in the group. 
uh, Rick is, you know, on the other, you know, a good hour away. Um, sometimes it's really hard to get everybody's schedule to work. Yeah, Dan. With game groups. Yeah, Dan, we can never get our schedule. You're about 12 hours away from me, I think, if I take the car. Well, if he really cared, he'd be there. Like a good friend. Ding, 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 ding. Howdy ho. Well, anyway, I, I guess gaming groups, I think, uh, it's great to, it's great to, it depends on how you feel about having people to your home or if you like to go to other people's home. Yeah. Or if you like to go to a neutral environment. Yeah. With, with, with meetups, I, 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 I wouldn't know how to do that, really. I wouldn't want to just invite strangers to my house. I kind of like, you do, as you said, vet people. Um, and that's good. That's a good thing about going to a, a gaming club or group or an association and getting your feelers out and meeting people and finding those right people that you can just then say, you know, what are you doing Sunday? Do you want to come around? Six hour game of Arkham Horror? Does that interest you? Good. It's a date. Um, and that's great. Um, but do you want to, to again, run it? I don't know if Dan would agree with me. Running a, a gaming group and then having strangers turn up is exciting but at the same time scary because it's like oh new people but how do you present yourself um for me that's really hard because i have this language barrier um do they understand every single word that i'm saying to them um luckily you know you get this this group of people that kind of like kind of semi speak english and so they they get, they they forgive you for your 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 bad accent and 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 t-shirt which says I like French people, uh, but um, apart from that, it's it, it's it's exciting as I said and it's scary at the same time. Um, and then trying to find the games or introduce them to other people and because I'm not really socially like that, I just like just being me and then people accepting me being me and then woo off we go but um yeah i you know it's for me i lost my ticket to ride there this this last year has been very odd for me because this last six years have been such a huge blessing to be able to play games regularly and play a lot of different games where my gaming collection you know had had grown from 20 games to 500 games uh uh, you know, I, I am playing way more than that that I don't own, you know. And so it's like this thing that was very precious to me. And then with the success of Game Toppers and helping out uh, in the hobby, um, before I was a lot more interactive playing these different games. And now I'm I'm so consumed with business with a, a, a fledgling company, a newer company that takes a lot of my attention and demands my my mental bandwidth and uh i tell you it's been disappointing to me because i feel like just a little bit that i've lost touch with 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 my hobby because i've been consumed with the business of the hobby versus my game group because basically our tuesday night group doesn't meet very often now i can call all of them and send out a text and they would generally come yeah you know but one one person in the group they had a baby uh, you know, so there's there's a dynamic there, but for me, a lot of times five six o'clock at night, I'm I'm done, I'm shot. Mm. Uh, just just from and I generally work much later than that anyway, so it's uh, it's difficult to find the time right now for me. Yeah, and I'm I'm sure in a big group, it's good to have like several people that will take responsibility to teach games. Or maybe get people to meet each other. Dan's saying that you know they've started having volunteers. Um, to mm. host game nights, which is a good mm. idea. And that's something that I've been thinking about. I've been thinking about actually volunteering to demonstrate games at a board game cafe. Um, this this will help me play more, as well as get me to uh, help promote Kickstarter games, because I get a few Kickstarter pro- uh, prototypes every now and again. And so it yep. like, gives them a chance to experience something new and also gives me a chance to get some feedback on how this Kickstarter is going for them, uh, how this prototype is going for them. Um, so, yeah, gaming groups are kind of like that. 
you have you have like certain group types of people that like playing the brand new game or the game which is not even out yet but they want to play it anyway even though it's on pieces of card and plastic um and then you get those people that are quite reserved and are quite happy to play bang the dice game five times in a row before going home and 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 having a nightcap yeah and that, that that's the great thing about gaming groups there's there's people's of all different types i have a 87 year old lady who plays quirkle every time she comes um and she's just she just she's just there for the gossip <laughs> she gossips with my wife and th- that that's nice it's you know it's it's community building especially in the small village where i live you, you just sit down and you just like take tiles and you talk about all oh, what mrs miggins did down the road well it's not mrs miggins it's mrs fleur oh <laughs> but um, I, you know dan and kabuki make a good point about spreading out the stress because sometimes having a regular group can be stressful because it's like oh i've got to get home from work i have to get ready to teach a game uh my room isn't set up yet the game isn't set up you know for me when i have people over i generally will have the game selected by the group tell everybody what games they want to play come to a consensus have it set up and then uh, i'm not the games teacher generally if i've played a game many times um, i'm a good teacher but teaching a new game it's not for me so uh it's one of those things that you have to have all those cogs kind of working and if you can have people take some of the load share the load frodo yeah i'll share the load then then you can make it to mordor yeah yeah i think that's the problem that i have with my gaming group is I, I, there's no one to share the load with i've had a couple of people turn up from time and time and you know um they've been like big game players and been able to demonstrate games to other groups of people while i'm demonstrating games to a, a another portion of the table um but it's like it is it is a stress to have to just keep teaching games and teach keep keep teaching games and keep teaching games for a whole night for four hours maybe less um but um at the end of the day it's a great pleasure just to see people laughing and communicating and bundling together so there, there are advantages to having a game group and there are advantages to having like a, a regular group of just friends. Well, and I think uh, when you put up the poll, let's ask people what they like about uh, about their uh, having a regular game group, and what is their biggest reason, um, or possibly you know what what is their favorite type of game group? Yeah, something of that nature, okay. and get get people get some feedback in that. Um, I really don't have any more closing remarks about that other... Do you have anything else you want to talk about related to this? No, if you, if you live down in my south portion of Babylon, please knock on my door and come play games with me. I'll, I need someone to play games with me. <laughs> well, we will be coming in after Essen to to the to the Dungate. <laughs> and and we'll, we will visit... Visit uh, Sir Badger and his lovely family. Yes, we're making a new throne for you, so, so you can sit on it. <laughs> oh, wonderful. I love that. The porcelain throne. The porcelain throne. <laughs> the porcelain throne. <laughs> well, before we sign off, we again want to thank our gracious uh, sponsor, Arcane Wonders. Arcane Wonders has uh, been with us since we started, and... Uh, they make the great Dice Tower Essential line of games. You know, Sheriff of Nottingham was one of our favorite bluffing uh, games, and now it has the expansion for it, All the Merry Men. Of course, Onitama, fantastic little abstract game that uh, people are loving with with several of the expansions now available and the new Wind expansion that's just come out. In addition, Arcane Wonders has a brand new game that I've actually played. I didn't talk about it today on the the the, the uh, good, the not so bad and ugly, but it's a game called Critical Mass, and it's a mech on mech warrior game. We have both boxes, so we have four mechs that you can choose from, and they all have different abilities, and you can power up these abilities, and then you, you try to take out that ability of the other mech playing these cards back and forth. Um, incredibly exciting game. Um, I think this is going to be a big hit from Arcane Wonders 
And again, it stays in their tradition of producing fine games like Spoils of War, Royals, and Mage Wars. Uh, so super excited about uh, what Arcane Wonders has to offer. Check them out at arcanewonders.com. We thank them again for their, their long sponsorship and support of Berkey and Badger. And with that, uh, where can they find us, uh, Barry? Here. Now. Here. <laughs> right on the Google Live Hangout. Yes. You can find us on YouTube. You can find us on Board Games Everybody Should.com and Board Game Theatre. We both have our own websites with the links to Berkey and Badger. You can also find us on Libsyn, Berkey and Badger Board Game Babble Show. <laughs> um, <laughs> and anything. I think if you type in Berkey and Badger anywhere, it will, it will find us. I think we're the only Berkey and Badger out there. Or Babble Show. That's right. Or whatever. But um, that's where you can find us. Yeah, the Board Game Geek Guild, 2248. And oh, yeah. All of our Facebook stuff. You can find me at Board Game Theater on Facebook and Twitter as well. And you'll see us sharing all of this information. We'd love to have you join us. You can listen to past episodes and enjoy that. And I got to say, the the professional audio version of Berkey and Badger, which this is not... This is this is a couple monkeys with a keyboard, and we never should see. Look what happens. See, just his, he goes flying off just the way it goes. Uh, <laughs> uh, but uh, this the professional audio uh, edit that Barry does is fantastic with all the fun drops and it cleans up some of the things. So if you want to listen to us wow. on iTunes on your commute. Or on Stitcher Radio, you can find us at Berkey and Badger Board Game Battle. Yeah. And you won't see us picking our noses on the on the podcast. No, no. No, no. <laughs> well, with that, Barry, I think we've got another show in the books, and it's been fun talking to you. So glad to connect with you again. And in our next show, we're going to have a special guest. Stay tuned, and you'll hear all about it. Thank you again for listening to Berkey and Badger's Board Game Babble. This show was written, produced, and performed by Kevin Burkhardt Smyre and Barry Dublin. As was the music, too, with a little help from the balance of power. Although the good, the bad, and the ugly theme was composed by Ennio Marconi, and background effects were supplied by Sirenscape. Enhance your gaming at sirenscape.com. Join us next time where we might have a special guest or we may review a game. But either way, there'll be more craziness and more babbling. Blooper time. We can come back at blooper time if you want. Bloopers. 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 Say something stupid. <laughs> Bloopers. 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 <laughs> Bloopers. Yeah. Bloop. 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 I think we're still live. We are still live. Bloop. I'm, lo- I'm waiting for some bloopers to happen. Bloop. 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 Bloopers. <laughs> I don't think crossing your eyes like that will actually translate that well. What do you mean, crossing my eyes? What are you talking about? <laughs> I'm not crossing my eyes or dotting my T's. Uh, who are you looking at, me or him? <laughs> <laughs>